chapter 9 the Trinity, v. The revealed Christ, is the word ready for him. First Bible lesson, John chapter 10 verses 8 and 9, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 12 verses 18 to 21, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall shew judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive, nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. Golden text, John chapter 4 verses 24 to 26, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messias cometh, which is called Christ, when he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. The thieves and robbers, at any time you derail by accepting any other form of teaching, you are already perished. If the people of old were faithful in God, the world would not have been as it is today. You may recall how the people were doubting the personality of our Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah. According to them, it was said that when he shall come, his parents would not be known. John chapter 7 verse 27. They were in doubt of his person for they regarded him as the son of a carpenter, and they treated his words with disdain. But unfortunately, his words are life everlasting, even till today. He is the only true witness about the nature of God. The text that will aid you to know the expected Messiah is the first lesson. Do not believe any leader who came before our Lord Jesus Christ. Those leaders were but his witnesses. He is the only person whose words we should hearken unto, because he is the way and the truth, and we should follow him alone. If you believe in his words then you will have life. There will be no occasion of stumbling in you, and you will neither experience hunger, sickness, lack, death, nor losses. This gospel serves as food for thought to your soul. The teachings of the prophets encourage discrimination, for some people claim to be the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, among others. This explains why our Lord Jesus Christ emphasizes on adherence to his teachings as a condition for salvation. There is no other teaching which can save except the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is because he is the one whom God anointed and sent to save the world. Let it be known that our Lord Jesus Christ is the act through which this generation should board to a coast where safety is guaranteed. Our hopes should be on him, for salvation comes from him. The world should be greatly pitied. Our Lord Jesus Christ was given derogatory names, yet he was the one God sent to deliver humanity. Even till date, none believes in him and this is why there is great suffering in the world. All the prophets of old prophesied and preached about our Lord Jesus Christ as the one to lead man to the accurate knowledge of truth. And when he came, he proved this through his words, teachings, and behavior. He revealed to the entire world that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But the Samaritan woman said, The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, when he is come, he will tell us all things. John chapter 4 verse 25. Now the question is, at the time he came, did you do what he asked you to do? Recall when the woman said to our Lord Jesus Christ, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. John chapter 4 verse 20. The excerpt reveals clearly that people have been struggling and worshipping in different places for so very long. So what you are seeing today is never a new thing. Some people worship in the forest, water, and other places. The truth is that our Lord Jesus Christ had told the Samaritan woman that, The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye know not what ye worship, we know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. John chapter 4 verses 21 and 22. Our Lord Jesus Christ revealed to the entire world that God is a spirit, and truly, He is. He told the Samaritan woman everything about God in its simplest form, and finally told her that He was the one who has come to lead the world. But in spite of these revelations, He stayed in the world for 33 years, 
preaching the word of God yet nobody believed or accepted him. Instead, they regarded him as a demented fellow and discouraged those who had the urge to follow him. This explains why I talk about the revealed Christ at all times, each year. He alone is the way, and if you derail from his teachings, you are bound to perish, and your blood is upon you. Church leaders, are they anointed? The churches that inundate the world today are a bundle of vanity. Some people say that the Roman Catholic Church is the first church that was founded on earth. Are you not aware of what Christ said as quoted in the first Bible lesson? The early prophets were not sent by God, neither were they anointed. That was why they could not maintain followership. Even till date, some of them still exist, and they form groups consisting of 3 to 40 or more people, beating drums and performing many horrible acts. This, however, cannot make them the anointed. It is only Christ who was sent to lead the world. He is that spirit that leads us to the knowledge of truth, and the world puts her hope of salvation in his name. Moses bore testimony about him in Acts chapter 3 verses 22 and 23. This explains the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ said in the book of John chapter 5 verses 45 to 47, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father, there is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Recall how our Lord Jesus Christ told the two disciples who were talking about him after his resurrection as recorded at Luke chapter 24 verses 26 and 27. All the prophets bore testimonies about our Lord Jesus Christ. People like prophet Samuel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and others spoke about him, but Christ's testimonies were not accepted by any. Our Lord Jesus Christ kept every instruction from the Father and rejected what was not from the Father. That is why his words constitute the only truth from the beginning of life till now. And since he did not want the world to perish, he directed us to the guidance of the Holy Spirit as he said, Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. John chapter 15 verse 13. He puts it clearly that he came from the Father, and this is exactly what I am teaching you. You are to shun whatever teachings and practices you have put yourself into, for God is a spirit. You should hearken only to whatever instructions God gives you. Beloved, the way of God is incomprehensible. Everybody was awaiting the arrival of our Lord Jesus Christ. On this note, Peter received baptism seven times. Peter was always going for baptism, but at last he heard about our Lord Jesus Christ and decided to be baptized again. And on receiving that baptism his eyes were immediately opened, and he recognized him as the one whom the world was expecting, and he followed him. Therefore, I am appealing to you to decry old doctrines. Your claim of any church membership would not be of any help to you. You should realize that his coming was foretold by many, and truly he is here on earth, and you should, having known this truth, do away with all other teachings, and abide by his teachings only. A cursory examination reveals that churchgoers neither say nor do things which agree with the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. To be a member of a particular church is not the problem, but to choose the right one is the crux of the matter. In the different church denominations the words of Christ are re-echoed but that of the old prophets are played down, meaning that the words of our Lord Jesus Christ constitute everlasting life, truth, and the way. His name is Peace and if you should have faith in his name, you are saved. Read the first Bible lesson again. First Bible lesson, John chapter 10 verses 8 and 9 All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The beginning of man's salvation, the inhabitants of the world are to be pitied because up till now some people still go to the forest with lanterns to perform certain rituals. They offer sacrifices to gods and mermaids, kill goats, sheep, light candles and burn incense, etc. All these things are vanity, and they are of no use. People need to have a change of mind over these unwholesome acts. These ungodly engagements reveal the fact that before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ to the world nobody knew God. As at the time Joseph was sold into slavery in Egypt, 
the world was still in darkness. While Joseph was in Egypt, no one knew God, as such, the people continued in the worship of idols, mermaid, etc. God decided to get the children of Israel out of such an ungodly environment to a place designated for them to stay and worship God in spirit and in truth. That was the beginning of man's salvation, after which God promised to send his son to die as the final atonement. However, for the period of 430 years, even Joseph did not know how God should be served, likewise, Moses, Samuel, David, and all the people of Israel. They were all ignorant of how to serve God, even in the land of Canaan, not until the Messiah came as was promised. Many people regard Moses as a man of God. True, he is a man of God because he succeeded in taking the children of Israel from the hands of Pharaoh. You may recall that he instructed the Israelites to perform some sacrifices and anointed their doorposts with the blood of animals used for the sacrifice. These acts were not the correct approach to worshipping God. Thus, Moses only played his part of taking the Israelites to Canaan, but the one to lead and teach mankind to the accurate knowledge of the truth is our Lord Jesus Christ. Being God himself, he taught the Israelites about God. That was the beginning of the journey to salvation. I am exhorting you to withdraw from any secret society, group or organization into which you have initiated, and follow the Holy Spirit, for He is the way. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, if read, shows that people of old served God with carnal intents because they were not led to the knowledge of the truth. At verse 22 of Hebrews 9, it is written, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. The law, sacrifices and other ungodly acts do not lead man to the knowledge of truth. These acts lead to perdition. God loves this generation the most, hence he promised that this generation will not pass away until all that is written about it comes to fulfillment. Today, that spirit that was talked about that he will lead mankind to the knowledge of truth has come. He comes in full swing with all his angels. His living with us explains why we have these teachings. Purify yourself so that God may come in and lead you to the knowledge of truth. If you do not walk in the Spirit, you are lifeless. Through His teachings you can gain the Spirit, thereby acquiring life. You should understand that if our Lord Jesus Christ had refused to be baptized by John, He could not have had eternal life, neither could He know what to do. Our Lord Jesus Christ was able to accomplish much because He was in Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the first and last prophet, priest, son of God and God himself, upon whom every soul hopes. As the son of man, his precious blood atones for our sins. He is a prophet through whom the Father directs everything unto us. Therefore if you abide by his instructions, you are sure of salvation. God is a spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ revealed that God is a spirit. Hitherto, nobody knew this fact. Some people claim to be the Holy Spirit, which is not correct. Even Christ did not make this sort of claim, and he did not give the Spirit to anybody. He only came to reconcile man with God. In order to achieve this, he had to propitiate for man, after which he departed, giving way for the Holy Spirit to come and teach mankind. Hence he said, Nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. John chapter 16 verse 7 Is the Comforter on earth? Having ascended, the Holy Spirit had to come down and live with men. He is teaching us that we should have love, peace, tolerance, etc., for these are the virtues that can help us live harmoniously with God. In spite of his teachings, people still hold on to the old teachings of orchestra, the worship of deities, etc. Moses initiated the doctrine of offering sacrifice, praying in the bush, burning of incense, and lighting of candles, etc. And unfortunately, people have adopted unwholesome method of worshipping God. Even when they are queried, they claim to have undergone thorough research into the Bible. The question is, how authentic is the result of their research? The above reason explains why we do not read and depend on the Old Testament. The very person that we were waiting for has come. Christ bore witness about the Holy Spirit, and He has come. What stops us from worshipping Him in the manner He desires? We should all follow Him, for He is the Teacher and God whom we were waiting for. He has come, 
and his dwelling place is your body since he does not live in a house that is built by hands neither does he live in the bush. This brings to mind why we should purify ourselves. Do not eat meat and fish, and drink no wine. Do not tell lies, do not fornicate, and do not indulge in idolatry or approach anybody for the purpose of preaching to you. You should rather listen to that which the Holy Spirit instructs, and put same into practice, and it will be good with you. Condition for salvation fulfilled, the condition for salvation was for holy blood to be shed. Indeed even the blood of volunteers was not needed for the salvation purpose. The only person whose blood was needed was he that was without sin. This is why it is stated that as it was through one man sin came into the world, Romans chapter 5 verse 12, so shall it be through one man this world would be saved, the person referred to is Christ, and not Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jacob or any other person. Christ deserves praises and honor. Call on his name whenever you are troubled, for through your faith in him, your problems will be solved. God does not deceive us in any way. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 3 states, Though I speak with the tongues of angels, and I have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and I have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Our Lord Jesus Christ satisfied this condition, and this explains why he was able to accomplish his assignment. But if Christ was indulging in ungodly behavior, he could not have saved mankind. It is pertinent to know that even the blood of five million sinners could not have saved the world. In the world one is paid millions of naira to kill another person, and because such a person who, feigning love, distributes such money to the poor. Worse still, the one uses the money to build houses. Do you think such a one would be saved? You are charged to have love. And in what way can you have love? It is for you to live a life of perfection. You should be aware that our Lord Jesus Christ kept a condition that if you should love one another, even as he loves you, the whole world will, through this, know that you are his disciples. John chapter 13 verse 35, Whatever you are capable of doing, be it sharing all your money to the poor, giving authentic visions, raising the dead, causing the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, the lame to walk, without love, you have no salvation. And you will not be recognized as one of the disciples of Christ. Remember that Christ fulfilled the Father's will before he was crowned. In like manner, he wants to crown us. I am stating that neither the blood of King David nor the blood of Abraham would have saved one person in the world. This is to tell you that our Lord Jesus Christ is a being who should be praised and glorified for his humane acts towards man. Therefore, you should have faith in him, for he is the only perfect being. Read the second Bible lesson. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 12 verses 18 to 21, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall shew judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. The hope of the Gentiles, do you understand the above portion? John the Baptist bore testimony about our Lord Jesus Christ as the one whose shoe he was not worthy to unlace. But that notwithstanding, our Lord Jesus Christ went to him for baptism. Now can you understand the paradox in this situation? This shows that nobody knows God, for flesh and blood do not know God. No matter how much money is in your possession or how knowledgeable you may be, such worldly things cannot help you to know God. It could be recorded that John the Baptist was advised to baptize people with water but the one who the Spirit of God shall descend upon was he that would baptize with spirit and fire. This was confirmed, as a voice from heaven said during the baptism, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 Beloved, imagine the number of people being baptized from Jerusalem, how many of them did the Spirit of God descend upon? The Spirit of God descended upon our Lord Jesus Christ only. This is because He is the only true Son of God. And He is the only one that had baptized people with fire and spirit.
and he also has used his words to change people unto God. The words of Peter and other disciples were not very powerful compared to the words of Christ. Why were their words not powerful? The truth is embedded in the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ was the only person whose words, from the beginning of the world, were used in accomplishing everything. Recall the case of a certain man who went with his epileptic servant to Christ's disciples for healing. The disciples prayed but could not heal him. At last, the man was taken to our Lord Jesus Christ, and was informed of how he was taken to his disciples and how they had prayed and done everything they could but all was in vain. But immediately our Lord Jesus Christ made a pronouncement the epileptic spirit went out of the man's servant, and he became instantly healed. With this, the disciples went to our Lord Jesus Christ, and inquired why they were unable to heal the man's servant. He did not tell them the reason but casually said it was because of their unbelief. Well, they were unable to accomplish that feat because it was not written of them to do such a thing. If our Lord Jesus Christ had retaliated when he was called derogatory names, do you think the world could have been saved? For the fact that Christ lived a perfect life, the world became saved even for eternity. Our Lord Jesus Christ was perfect, and he wants you to also live a perfect life. God is no respecter of persons, and you cannot be successful in your endeavors except you heed his instructions, Acts chapter 10 verses 34 and 35. You can deceive man, but not God. If you live up to God's expectations, you can never be disappointed. Even our Lord Jesus Christ was given certain conditions which he passed through successfully before the world was saved. He shed his blood on the cross. He did not start complaining, but rather pleaded with the Father to forgive his killers, for they knew not what they did. This shows that he was constantly perfect even unto death. It was promised that whoever would propitiate for man's sake, his name shall be exalted above all other names, hence today the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is exalted above every other name on earth. Thus by mentioning this name all evil powers are totally subdued. Before that time the name of Jehovah was used in performing all kinds of works. And this is why Christ himself was always praying by the name of the Father. At one time he said, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. John chapter 17 verse 12 Some people request that God should give them children to succeed them. And if one million children who are rogues are given to them, and they start having problems, what is their gain? But Christ was a perfect child who lived up to God's expectation. He gave himself up to be crucified on the cross, and now his name reigns supreme. Before that time, nobody believed in our Lord Jesus Christ. After his crucifixion, people started calling on his name, realizing the miracles which this name performed. Others joined, and today very many people are saved by mere calling on his name. For one's problem to be solved when calling on this name, his injunctions must be kept by such a person. Baptism for the Holy Spirit, John the Baptist was asked to baptize people with water, and that he whom the Spirit shall descend upon is the Son of God. Thus whoever is not baptized with water is not a child of God. You should understand that this is an everlasting promise, and it is unchangeable. But why is it that other people baptized with water do not gain the Spirit? Do the Apostolic Church, Church of Christ, Cherubim and Seraphim members, etc. not baptize? They claim to have been baptized, but have you heard or seen any sign in them? In Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, once a person is baptized the Spirit of God starts manifesting in the person. This is because God has come down by himself and lives with man, so you have no cause to doubt. He is the Spirit which lives in you. This generation is luckier than previous ones. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14 verses 15 to 17, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The above statement explains why I have been telling you to refrain from all vices and imbibe love. As soon as you have love the Spirit of God indwells you. But without love, even after baptism, you are devoid of the Spirit of God, which is why the signs are not shown in you. What you should know is that God is perfect. 
he knows anybody that loves him, and people who love him not. Hence he said, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Matthew chapter 7 verses 22 and 23. The above explains why I tell you that whenever one is baptized into this fold, he should not initiate into any secret society, steal, fornicate, or commit any vice. If one denounces these vices, the Holy Spirit will indwell the one, because he is virtuous. One of our spiritual songs says, Somebody is leading me. Who is the one that leads you? Is it not God? He lives in you, and directs you, and follows you wherever you go. If you should be left without keeping any of the commandments then you are not qualified to enter the kingdom of God. So if your hope is on Him, you are advised to refrain from sin and be pure as He is. But if you hope to call His name and continue to tell lies, steal, fornicate, kill and indulge in every other sin, you are not recognized, and no matter how you may call on His name, He will not answer you. Every worldly arrangement is not important, rather God wants you to be with Him at all times. This is why he advises you to be pure as he is pure, for no sinner can live with him. Read Psalms chapter 15 verses 1 to 5. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly, and walketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoureth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt, and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. If God should give you money, even as you are not pure, you will not be admitted into his kingdom. What then is your gain? However, I do not want any person to perish except a child of perdition. You were told about 30 years ago that virgins would be with me, and could it be said that the children of God are not the manifestation of that statement? They are pure and I am free with them as they are free with me. Thus if you are not a virgin, it means you are not qualified to be there. With this, I am not saying that I do not love everybody equally, but you cannot mix that which is black with white, because the two colors can never blend. So shun that which is bad, and embrace only that which is good. We have only one virtuous God. If somebody should preach any other God unto you, ignore him and go your way. People claim God saves man by grace. What is grace? Read the golden text again. Golden text, John chapter 4 verses 24 to 26, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that measures come out which is called Christ, when he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. The Holy Spirit is here, are we not led to the accurate knowledge of the truth? Have you not realized now that God is a spirit? Do the various church denominations know this? Instead of imparting this knowledge to the adherents, they rather talk about demons. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not say that another prophet or pastor shall come, but he declared that God shall come by himself. God is right in your midst today. Thus, once you purify yourself, he will come and abide with you forever. As soon as this takes place you are left without problems. Whether you pray or not, he is praying on your behalf, and you will gain eternal life. When Prophet Muhammad was about to die his followers asked him to tell them the one who would teach them and lead them to the accurate knowledge of truth. He told them that the knowledge of truth and the power to save himself was not within his control. With that unfavorable reply, they asked further what they should do to be saved. He told them to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit, that when he comes he would lead and teach them. This reveals how lucky this generation is. It is the fulfillment of the prophecy at John chapter 4 verses 21 and 22, and it also reveals that God is dwelling in you, and He is with you wherever you may be. You should learn from the testimony of one of our brothers, the lawyer, who said that when he was not baptized, he was behaving as he liked, 
but since he came into this fold, he found himself a changed man. There is no need for you to come here and demand any other teaching because God is already teaching you everything. And you are as free as the air. No angel or prophet is charged with the responsibility to guide you. This is because this is not their time. This is the time for the Godhead to rule. He guides and does everything for you. Nobody among the people can give you the needed salvation. This explains why our Lord Jesus Christ said, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh, when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you, that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. John chapter 16 verses 23 to 27. In brotherhood of the cross and star, whatever you ask I give it to you. You are all free and always with the Father because he dwells in you. You play pranks, tell lies to the Father while he provides all your heart's desires. After the resurrection, our Lord Jesus Christ told Mary, Touch me not, I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, your God. John chapter 20 verse 17 The same thing is applicable here. The Father is not only mine but he belongs to all of us. He is not only my God but the God of all those who practice these pieces of advice. Most of the people direct most of their material gifts to the Father. Others claim that it is only the Father who can do the works we witness in BCS. We have but one Father and we are all brethren. The activities of this fold are not those of idol worshippers. The only thing expected of you is to love one another, and once that is done, you are free. You must have heard the testimony of a certain medical doctor who said that he no more prescribes orthodox medication for the cure of people's sickness because they are not as potent as should be the case any longer. He said that it is the name of the Father alone that he uses to cure anybody that comes to him. You can see that our Lord Jesus Christ cured various sicknesses through the spoken word. Why do you two or more persons pray for a sick person? Like our Lord Jesus Christ, I am using the words to do all that I do. Here you are told, go, for you now have peace. No more sickness, no accident, and the same is fulfilled as declared. You are in your father's house, and he does everything for you free of charge. God is the only one that rules the whole world. Now you have no problem because you are so polished that even when you are moving along the street and somebody sees you, the power that emanates from you is enough to take away that person's problems. Right now when you come in here, I do not pray for you but I will tell you to go, for all your problems are solved, and it happens just as I said. I want you to also do the same. If all of you should possess this love, you are with me always, and you will continue to be with me forever. Beloved, it is said that a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let he who has ears hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father.